Ryan pulls the Night Owl Awakens. The Chicago Bears have just signed tight end Ryan Griffin to a one-year deal worth $2.25 million and also cornerback Tavon Young to a one-year deal as well. What's going on, guys? I'm back with another Chicago Bears free agency update video. If you guys want more of these, I'll be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll be reacting to every single signing the Bears make during free agency. And the draft is getting pretty close, guys. Okay, only a couple weeks until the 2022 NFL Draft. I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun. So if you guys want to see my mock draft, that's actually going to be coming within the probably the one, next one or two weeks. I'm going to try to get it out this weekend. If not, the next weekend at the very latest. But a lot of draft talk coming soon. A lot of predictions coming soon as well. So if you guys want all that, definitely be sure to subscribe. But in today's video, I'll be breaking down the latest signings by general manager Ryan Poles. Okay, a cornerback and a tight end. I'll talk about the cornerback first, Tavon Young. He's coming over from the Baltimore Ravens. He played there for six seasons. Only played... You know, probably half of those seasons because he was injured pretty frequently, okay? That was the one knock on this guy. But I'm telling you, if he stays healthy, this is actually a steal of a signing by the Chicago Bears. Because when healthy, he has been, you know, a really solid nickel cornerback in this league. And for a Bears secondary that is severely depleted in terms of depth, like this could actually prove to be a really good signing. We had to sign somebody at cornerback before the draft and Tavon Young was probably one of the top options available on the market at this point in time, okay, in wave two of free agency. So he was drafted back in 2016 by the Baltimore Ravens in the fourth round coming over from Temple and he's had some pretty good seasons with the Ravens, guys. Again, when healthy and that's the big if, okay, he's been injured for a good portion of of his career okay 2017 torn acl missed the entire season 2019 uh, had a neck injury missed the entire season 2020 tours acl missed the entire season so that is the main reason why he's even you know coming to us on a cheap one-year deal he gets banged up pretty frequently but if he stays healthy this is a starting level player at nickel corner i read you guys his stats right now so during his entire career he's had four sacks you know, uh, 127 tackles, 16 passes defended, 4 interceptions. But what the stats don't tell you is how good he's been on tape. Okay, if you look at some of his highlights last year, he actually played a good portion last year because Marcus Peters, the Ravens' number one cornerback, went down with the injury. So Tavon Young was starting a good portion of that season. And he had some really nice plays, guys. Okay, very physical. One of the most physical, you know, nickel cornerbacks in this league. And I think his mentality also fits exactly what Iberflus wants out of his secondary okay Iberflus's uh, secondaries in the past have been very physical aggressive ball hawking types of secondaries and Tavon Young is one of those guys okay he gets his hands on you he's physical at the line of scrimmage he can press and playing at nickel okay you're going to go up against some of the best uh you know slot receivers in the NFL and you need a guy like this that is able to play physical and get his hands to jam the receivers at the line of scrimmage so Smaller guy, he's 5'9", weighs 185, but he plays well beyond his frame. And a lot of the nickel cornerbacks in the league anyways nowadays are pretty small. And, you know, I think he could be a solid starting level option for us if he wins the battle in training camp and if he stays healthy. Again, that's a pretty big if because he has been injured like half of his season so far in the NFL. But I like this move because like for a team like the Bears... We're obviously not going to splurge a lot of money on a guy like JC Jackson, okay? Proven star level veteran players. That's not where the Bears roster is at this point in time. Right now, we're trying to take flyers on high upside, cheap players while we're trying to see who's going to be on this roster for long term. I still think the Bears are going to draft a cornerback because we still need more help in the cornerback department. Right now, we only have Jalen Johnson as the only sure thing in this entire cornerbacking room. Thomas Graham Jr. has some upside too, obviously, but... He only played a couple games last season because Matt Nagy refused to play him at all. So am I still concerned about the Bears cornerback room at this point in time? Yes, but he's signing like Tavon Young helps a lot. Okay, if he's healthy, he could actually be starting a nickel for us the entire year. So solid signing overall. Let me talk about the next signing then, the tight end, Ryan Griffin. And this is more of a, I think, a depth signing, right? Because obviously Cole Komet is presumably going to be the starter this year I know that Ryan Poles isn't the one that drafted him so high in the second round but he's only 23 years old there's still a lot to like in his potential I know he's disappointed a lot so far with the Chicago Bears but which offensive player hasn't disappointed under Matt Nagy so I'm still 
having a little bit of hope for Cole Komet. I know this is probably his prove-it year. If he doesn't do anything this year, then it's probably going to be gone soon. But this is a depth signing in Ryan Griffin, a guy that's been in the NFL for a long time. He's 32 years old, so an older guy. Has a lot of experience, which is pretty nice to have in the tight end room. He was drafted back in 2013 by the Houston Texans in the sixth round. He was there with the Texans until 2018. After that, he went to the Jets for the next three years of his career. And if I read you guys' stats, it's really nothing too special. He hasn't really been a number one tight end in this league. He was with the Jets for one season, but that season wasn't really anything special. So overall, his career, if I read you guys' his receiving stats, so you know, 2,158 yards. If you look at his touchdowns, 14 touchdowns. Catch percentage of 65.2%. If you look at his best year that came with the Houston Texans back in 2016, he had 442 yards to receiving touchdowns. With the Jets, he actually had five touchdowns during his first year there with Sam Darnold. So he has flashed a little bit during his career. He's had some pretty good moments, especially in the red zone. Okay, as a red zone thread, he could be pretty big because he's six foot six, weighs 255 pounds, definitely a freak of nature, really big guy, but he's just not very athletic or explosive, which is why he struggles to get open, you know, against some of the better linebackers or safeties in the NFL. And in today's NFL, you need a tight end that can, you know, get open with ease. That is explosive. That is, you know, fast, you know, guys like Travis Kelsey, guys like Darren Waller. So obviously this is not going to be a number one tight end type of scenario. Okay. At, at the very best, I think he's going to be a number two, maybe number three, be an occasional, you know, receiving or blocking tight end. He's actually a pretty decent blocker, not a great blocker, according to what I've seen people say, but definitely average level blocker. He is 32 years old, though, so he's not going to get much better at this point in his career. If anything, he's going to get worse. But as a depth option, you can't hate on it too much. Okay, what's the worst that can happen? He doesn't work out for us. He doesn't do much for us. And we get rid of him the following year. But on the flip side, maybe he shows something in camp and is a solid, you know, number two to Cole Komet. Right now, Jesper Horst is really the only other tight end we have in the tight end room and Jesper you know he might actually challenge too for the starting spot right like I don't want to disrespect Cole Komet at all but Jesper Horsted in the limited snaps he's gotten he's made the most out of them guys he actually has better hands in my opinion than Cole Komet at least so far that we've seen so it'll be interesting to see how this tight end room really shapes up I think right now it's Cole Komet number one Horsted number two uh, Ryan Griffin number three will probably add another tight end in the draft of free agency but that's our tight end room at this point in time so let me know what you guys think about the signing these signings down below in the comments okay i think the first one Tavon young is a pretty high upside pretty nice signing you know he could actually start for us the entire year and this guy ryan griffin the tight end not very that exciting but as a depth option sure okay i'm not gonna hit on it too much so again let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments who else do you want the chicago bears to sign there's still a lot of free agents out there available okay guys like Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, JC Treader. Okay, still a lot of solid guys out there that maybe we could sign. So let me know your thoughts and opinions down below, guys. But as always, bear down.